Hey guys, great to have you back. In this video, we're gonna go into a lot of detail of some great follow along drills to make crisp, clean contact with your irons. Now, three things need to happen if we're gonna hit those irons solid. Number one, we need to have a good weight shift. Number two, we need to have good rhythm in the swing. So even if I'm making good positions and I don't have good rhythm, good timing, then I'm gonna struggle hitting solid golf shots. And number three, our contact with the ground needs to be really solid. I need to be able to hit the ball first and then hit the ground just after that time and time again. That's really gonna help our consistency. So I got a lot of drills. We're gonna work through several drills that are gonna help you to do that. Let's start out by talking about how we're gonna move our body to get a weight shift and where the positions our body should be in. So what I've done is I've set a ball up here where I would be hitting with an iron shot. And then directly in front of this, um, about two feet in front of that would be the middle of this first tail and it's in front of the golf ball. And then about four feet to the center of this second tail. So from my ball to the center of this towel is about four feet. From my ball to the center of this towel is about two feet on this side of my golf ball. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a club across our shoulders and I'm gonna to break it down and make sure that you get a great weight shift, a great turn, and really load up those shoulders in the backswing. So that's gonna be crucial to getting a fluid swing, to getting a lot of power. We gotta make that good turn. We call in the top speed system a power turn going back and a power turn as we're finishing our swing. So I'm gonna put this club across my shoulders and first I'm gonna stand this level with the ground. So if I was gonna turn my club this way, it'd just be like a helicopter blade turning parallel with the ground. Now from there, I wanna go ahead and rotate, shift my weight a little bit to the right where this club would now be pointing directly to the camera. So my weight is now shifted a little bit to the right inside of my right foot, but I'm still just turning level with the ground. So that would be kind of pointing out to the front edge of that towel. Now from here, I'm gonna tilt my shoulders down until my club is pointing toward the center of that towel. That's keeping me in posture. So now I've forced myself to shift my weight to the right. If I was to drop this club, it would land kind of right here on the inside of my foot. And then I'm also gonna tilt down so that I stay in my posture. So I've gotten a weight shift and I've tilted downward. So that's got me in a good weight shift to the right. I'm in a position where I can now shift my weight on through to the front foot. Now, if you're a very flexible person, if you're PJ Tour player quality, we can go ahead turn that instead of to the camera all the way to the middle of that towel and then tilt down. Now I've gotten this really big turn with my shoulders. I've really loaded up and we'll be able to get a lot of speed that way. So regardless of whether you can get to the front of the towel or the back of the towel, we're still focusing on having those shoulders pointing down to the towel at the top and getting that weight shift to the right. So whenever I do drills, a lot of times I'll show incorrect movements. Maybe I'll show a reverse weight shift so that my my weight's going back here in my backswing and then falling away in the downswing. It's almost impossible for me to get good solid contact when I'm doing that. I'll hit some behind the ball. I'll hit when I hit in front of the ball. It's all over the place. So making sure that we get those shoulders loaded up correctly as we're going back, that's gonna really be important to making consistent contact on the way down. So that's the first part of the weight shift. Now, as we come on through the ball, Here's the top of the backswing. Now I'm gonna come on through and my shoulders will slightly steepen up a little bit. So at this point, my right foot's off the ground, my right ankle, my hips, and my shoulders are all in alignment if we're looking from this angle. And now my club, I'll go ahead and stick it out this way so we can see a little bit easier, is gonna be pointing down toward this front towel. So anywhere in there is good. So this would be kind of me standing up facing the target. Now I'm tilting down and this towel is gonna to be a little bit closer because our shoulder angle will steepen up slightly. So if I took away, let's actually take away the club now, do a good 10, 15 reps, pause this video right now, do a good 10 or 15 reps and hit those two zones going back and going through. And once we come back, now what we're gonna do is make that same shoulder turn with a golf swing. So in my back swing, there's my shoulder turn pointing to the towel. In my down swing, follow through. Now I'm gonna be about right here on my shoulder turn is pointing to the front tail. Go ahead and do another, just about 10 reps or so, so you get comfortable with that. Now, once we're comfortable with that, I'm gonna, I have a feeling for how to get my weight to shift and for how to stay in my posture. From there, let's go ahead and move the ball, and I'm gonna just do about 10 swings coming back and through, and let's make this nice and fluid and rhythmic. So as I go back and through, I was only going to here before, I'm gonna go ahead and let it come all the way on around to where I'm facing the target. So let's do another 10 practice swings Nice and easy, nice and slow, trying to rotate our shoulders, make a weight shift to the right, make a weight shift to the left. So if my club stays in those zones, now all of a sudden I'm very consistent on how I'm coming through the swing 
I'm gonna be able to hit the ball really clean. So that's the first piece of it. If my weight shift is good, then everything else can work on top of that. Now, this is great for building just the positions of the swing, but you're not gonna have a ton of rhythm if you're doing that. The rhythm is a big piece of this, and, and really what rhythm boils down to is, I need this club to accelerate right at the bottom of the swing. If I'm accelerating quickly from the top, what's gonna happen is, let's imagine I'm casting a little bit. Now I've, I've spent up all my energy back here. As my club reaches the ball, it's gonna feel very light in my hands. It felt very heavy when I was accelerating halfway in the downswing, but as I came to impact, I really don't have anything to get that whoosh or that speed coming through contact. The club's gonna feel light and I'm gonna feel like I just can't tell if the club face is open or closed. So I got a great drill for you. I'm gonna grab, if you have a jump rope at your house, you can go ahead and grab a jump rope. And this is, you know, imagine this is a full size jump rope. If you're jumping rope, the only place the rope is really accelerating is right when it's going under your feet. You have kind of a snapping that you do with your hands to get that to whip on through and then it just kind of coast the rest of the way around and then you snap it again. So it's all happening at one point. Same thing in the golf swing. I want that all to be happening, boom, right at the bottom. I don't want to be snapping the club back here or too late, dragging it through. Some people will do that. I want to get that snap from the ball right on out in front. So a good way to fill this is if you have a jump rope or a piece of rope that's got some weight to it at your house, spin that around and see if you can get that to kind of snap right at contact. So this isn't golf swing. I'm just spinning around almost like a Ferris wheel, straight up and down. And I want to get that to snap right at the bottom. So I'm trying to get a lot of speed with that. You can even do it with your left hand. It's a little counterintuitive, but as I start getting that to whip on through, I'm getting the acceleration in the right spot. This isn't gonna directly translate over the golf swing, but this is gonna get you a feel for when am I trying to get the speed in my swing. Once we've done that, let's get that same feeling, that same snapping action happening, coming through the ball with my golf swing. So now if I'm rushing hard from the top and I'm really trying to hit it hard from back here, I'm not gonna be able to snap down at the bottom. I wanna be nice and soft. I wanna be able to gain some lag get into that maximum power position when you're halfway down. And then from there, as you go to the straight line release, that's when you wanna snap that club on through there. As we're working from contact to the straight line release, that's where that snapping action is happening. So if you're following the top speed golf system, you know that we're getting a lot of lag here and then I'm releasing that on out in front. So I want you to go ahead, make a couple more practice swings just beside the golf ball and do the exact same thing. Nice and smooth, but we're actually gonna get that acceleration feeling just in front of the golf ball. So same thing I'm doing with my hands or my shoulders that I was working on earlier. I'm just gonna tie that into a nice fluid feeling swinging through the ball. Now, our last piece here, we're gonna work on clipping a tee out of the ground and making sure that I get that divot either at the tee or in front. And we're gonna tie it all in together. So the first part, I gotta get my shoulders loading up back and through. Second part, I'm getting that kind of acceleration at the bottom. That's a big piece to it. And then lastly here, I'm gonna clip this tee out of the ground. So you'll find, just by paying attention, let me go ahead and do this incorrectly one time. I'm gonna go ahead and hit behind the ball. Well, when I look down there, I could even put several tees in a row. Let me grab that other tee again here. Grab a bonus tee. That tee was about right there, or here in the middle of my divot. So you can line up two or three or four tees in a row, and practice getting that divot happening in front of those tees. I'm only teeing those up about a quarter inch off the ground. You can see I'm clipping that tee first, then hitting the ground. So it seems a little bit basic, but you'd be surprised just by having feedback there, having six or eight tees in a row and making those practice swings, just how good your control gets of where you're hitting the ground. You do that every day for a few weeks, and you're gonna get really good at clipping that tee out of the ground and getting that good contact. So let's tie it all together now. Now at this point in the swing, you should be a good you know, 60 or 80 swings in. So if you haven't done your practice swings, be sure to do those first, go through all these drills that I talked about, and then we'll, we'll be able to build on that. So once we get the ball here, we'll go ahead and put a tee in the ground there so we know where our divot is. Let's actually do this. I'll put a tee right there, and I'll put my ball just inside. So if my divot happens in front of that golf ball, I'm gonna know I had pretty good contact. So good shoulder turn. I'm getting that acceleration to happen at the ball and that divot's gonna be in front. Let's try it out. There you go, guys. Divot started right at the tee, came out in front. I know I got good contact. So this video is not just a 
you know, watch it once and you should be able to perfect all the drills. Work through those drills. Do them several days in a row and you're going to get a better feel for it. If you're struggling with that iron play, a lot of these drills are going to help with that. Getting that shoulder turn, so crucial. Getting the snap at the bottom is crucial. And then we've got to hit the ground at the same time. So work through this several times in a row and you're going to be hitting the ball a lot more solid. Good luck to you guys. All right, guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the iCard and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 